If you have a Bible today, would you open up, please, to the seventh chapter of Matthew? Matthew. Matthew chapter 7. And I want to share what I was going to share a couple of weeks ago before the assassination attempt on Donald Trump. And I felt led to change my message and share along those lines. But now I want to get back to this because I believe God wants me to talk about this. I believe that, that there are people that are going through some tough battles. You may be going through a battle physically. You may be going through a battle financially. You may be going through a battle relationally. You may be going through a battle emotionally or mentally. You may be going through a battle with ministry. I mean, it could be any number of things in our lives, but nonetheless, some of these battles are tough battles. Some are not so tough, but some are tough. Some of these battles look like they're going to take us out. They look like they're going to overcome us. But did you know that we have a God that wants us to win battles? And did you know God is good at winning battles? Did you know Jesus is the victor? And he wants to give us victory. I think of 1 John 5, 4 that says, Now this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. And so the Lord is going to build our faith today. But here's what I want to do. I want to talk about winning tough battles. And I want to give you five keys to winning tough battles. Five keys to winning tough battles. And let's start here in Matthew chapter 7 and listen to something that Jesus said. Let's start with what Jesus said in Matthew 7. And I'd like us all to read together verses 7 and 8 out loud. I'm reading from the New King James Version today. If you don't have the New King James Version with you, that's all right. There are a lot of good Bible versions. But just for the sake of us reading aloud, then uh, if you'll follow along on the screen, that way we can all read the same words. Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8, reading loudly and together. Let's read. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Now, this is Jesus talking. If you have a red letter Bible, then it's in red letters. That means Jesus said this. And how many of you believe Jesus is a liar? Good, nobody. I didn't even want to look just in case somebody raised their hand. Sometimes people are conditioned to raise their hand on anything you say. Raise your hand. Well, Jesus is not a liar. Jesus knows what he's talking about. He's not just giving us some pie in the sky, feel good message. He's telling us the truth. And listen to what Jesus said. He said, ask and it will be given to you. He didn't say might be, could be, should be. Sometimes, most of the time. No, what did he say? Ask and what? It will be given to you. Seek and what? You will find. Knock and what? It will be open to you. And then look at verse 8. If you didn't get verse 7, listen to verse 8. For everyone who asks receives. For everyone who asks receives. Is Jesus a liar? You know, if we can't trust what Jesus said here, how can we trust what he said about going to heaven? Either everything he said is true or we can't depend on anything he said. Isn't that true? Well, it is true. Everything he said is true. And we just need God to help us to understand. So Jesus said, for everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds and to him who knocks, it will be open. So I'm going to give you five keys to winning tough battles. Are you ready for this? You might want to write these down. Key number one. Find out what God's word says about your situation. Find out what God's word says about your situation. Find out what God's word says about your situation. Why? Well, because God has a perspective on that situation. And if you know what that is, then you can align yourself to him and receive from him. But first you have to know what he thinks about it. In Isaiah 55, 11, God says, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please and prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So God says, when I say something, I expect what I say to come to pass. So that's why we need to find out, well, what did you say? What did you say about what I'm going through? Jeremiah 1.12 is where God said, You have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. 
I am watching over my word. Not everybody else's words. I'm watching over my word to perform it. Well, if God wants to perform his word, we need to find out what his word says. Isn't that right? In Psalm 119.89, the psalmist said to the Lord, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. That means he's not going to change his mind. So we don't want to be in contradiction to his word. We want to find out what is it that God's not going to change his mind about? What is it that God is committed to? What is it that he's determined to bring to pass? Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do? Or has he spoken and shall he not make it good? Well, the answer obviously is no, he will make it good. Yes, he will do it. Let me just give you an example about certain situations and what God's word says. For example, for being forgiven from your sins. Maybe you've done wrong in the past and you're not even sure God forgives you. So you have a guilty cloud hanging over your head. Or healing. You're, you have sickness or some kind of a disease or illness or weakness in your body and you need physical healing. Well, here's one that hits both of those. Psalm 103 verses 2 and 3 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. So how many of our iniquities does he forgive? All of them. All of them. The bad ones? The bad ones. The not as bad ones? The not as bad ones. They all need to be forgiven, and he forgives all of them. But it, it goes on to say, who heals all your diseases. Now, that sounds too good to be true. But remember, God says, oh, no, when I speak something, I intend for it to come to pass. Isn't that right? See, so he said right here, who heals all your diseases. And this is just one verse. There are many, like Exodus 15, 26, where God essentially said, if you'll obey me, Israel, then I won't put the diseases on you that I brought on Egypt to punish them, for I'm the Lord who heals you. I am the Lord who heals you. Or Isaiah 53, 5, by his stripes we are healed. Right? See, we've got these verses in the Bible that tell us what God wants to do with regard to our physical bodies. Well, what about provision? Verses like Philippians 4.19, and my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Is that right? And my God shall supply all your need. I also like 3 John 2. Beloved, I would above all things, I pray above all things that you be in health, uh, prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So God doesn't just want us to prosper physically and financially and not prosper in our soul. He wants us to prosper physically and financially in conjunction or parallel to the prosperity of our minds and soul. Why? Because if you get these others ahead, then you'll just enjoy those others and not obey God. And the Lord doesn't want that. No, he wants us to get to heaven, not just be financially wealthy here. Somebody say amen. Amen. How many of you are glad God has priorities for our lives and his priorities are better than, than sometimes ours are, often? Well, then deliverance. Some people need deliverance. Need deliverance from pornography? Oh, that's rampant today. That's rampant. There are many people who want to be delivered from pornography. Did you know God wants you to be delivered from pornography? And he knows you want to be delivered from pornography. See, and so we need to find out, well, what does the Bible say? Does the Bible say that God will help you? What about from alcoholism? What about from drug addiction? What about from depression? What about from anger, outbursts? What about from demons? You know, many people are dealing with demons. Now, many people are dealing with demons and they don't know it, but other people know it. I mean, they hear voices. Things are happening in their home. They feel things. They sense things. That's demonic. Does the Lord want us to be delivered from those things? Absolutely. I love the passage where the Bible says, For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. 
Well, John 8, 31 and 32 is where Jesus said, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. See, so God wants you to be free. Just because he wants you to be free, that doesn't mean you're going to be free. You have to know how to win these battles. You have to know how to align yourself with the Lord. That's what we're talking about here. How about guidance? You just need wisdom for decisions that you're making. You're making decisions in your own mind. The Bible says there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end is the way of death. Following what other people are doing instead of following God. But James 1.5 says, if, anyone, if any one of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. See, so there are scriptures in the Bible that tell us what God's will is for our situations. I'm just giving you a sample. But you can look these up. You can, you can, in fact, you can just Google and say, scriptures on healing, scriptures on financial provision, scriptures on, I mean, today it's at our fingertips. And you'll get various sites that have all kinds of scriptures. But find out what the scriptures are. How about restoration? You've lost things in the past. Investments have gone sour. Or you've lost your home. You've lost your car. You've lost your marriage. you lost this, lost that. Well, Joel 2.25 says, So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. I will restore to you the what? Years. God says, listen, stick with me here and I'll restore I'll restore. Okay, that's number one. Find out what God's word says about your situation. Here's key number two. Get into a position to receive. Get into a position to receive. Now watch this. I'm going to use Pastor Corey here. Uh, Pastor Corey, come up here for just a second. Stand, stand right here. And turn around and smile at everybody. Okay, now look at this. I'm handing him my Bible, but he's not taking it. He wants, he wants you to see how good looking he is. That's why he's looking that way. No, I'm just kidding. I told him to do that. But tur turn around now. I want to give you this Bible. See, you turn around, he puts his hand out, and there it is. He's got it. You know, just because God's giving you something doesn't mean you're in a position to receive it. You have to turn. You have to make an adjustment. You have to make an adjustment. And the Bible teaches us how to make the adjustment. You know, we, we like to quote... Second Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, then I'll forgive their sin and uh, hear their prayer and hear, heal their land. We love that. But we almost never read the context of it. But the context of it was Israel had been sinning and rebelling against God for years, in fact, generations. It had been going on and on and on. And God had sent prophets and had been telling them this. And listen to this. Let me start from the 11th verse, and then we'll get down to that 14th verse. It said, Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house, and Solomon successfully accomplished all that came into his heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up the heaven and there is no rain or command the locust to devour the land or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Now, when God is saying this, Israel is in a state generally of obedience because David had led them there and now Solomon in his early years is also leading them there. But God knew that in the future they were going to go away, which they did. So God is saying, when that happens and when my people begin to stray from me and not listen to me anymore and I try to get their attention, try to tell them, I send other people to tell them and they, and they look at the other people and say, what about you? What, you tell, tell them, look at you, look at you. What, are you, what are you getting on me about? And they're prideful, they won't listen to me, they won't listen to anybody else. Then I need to get their attention before they go, they go off the deep end to hell. And so what do I do? I begin to withhold the blessing and even allow distraction to come, even allow resistance to come to them. Why? To get their attention. And when that happens, if they will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, I'll hear from heaven. 
Didn't he say that? Look at it again. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Then I'll hear from heaven. Ask and it will be given. See? But notice there's something in there that the Bible teaches you. Jesus not, is not ignoring all that other. He's speaking in the context of all the other truths that God brings. See? And so he's, he's expecting us to understand that no, you can't live in rebellion against God and stop listening to him and get, get focused on serving money and building money instead of serving the Lord and expect the blessing of God to continue to flow. That would be a bad father to bless you all the way to hell. Isn't that right? No, God wants you to be blessed here, but also get to heaven. Amen. See, and so here it he said, then I'll hear from heaven. Then I'll hear from heaven and will forgive their sins, heal their land, answer their prayer. That's what Jesus said, asking it to be given. But notice God says you need to be in a position to receive. And if you're not in a position to receive, then it's going to hinder the prayers from being answered. And you won't win the tough battle. But God wants you to win the tough battle. What do you have to do? You have to repent when you sin. And by the way, everybody sins. If you're not repenting on a regular, even daily basis, then you're not paying attention. You're not paying attention to what you say, what you think, what you allow, what you watch. Come on. We live in a contaminated world, a compromised world. And so we have to constantly bring ourselves into alignment with the Lord and, for, and repent. Matthew 6.15 is where Jesus said, if you do not forgive other people, then your father will not forgive your offenses. Here's one example that you can be offended at somebody and not forgive them, and then you're not forgiven. So you're not in a position to receive. So I said, well, I don't have any unforgiveness against anybody. You talking bad about anybody? You criticizing anybody? You talking about what they did and how they are? See, sometimes we don't attach the word unforgiveness to that but we're not forgiving them. We keep bringing up their fault. We keep bringing it up again and again and again. Is that what God does to us? No, it's not. What does he do? He forgives us. He lets it go. Isn't that right? And so, now that doesn't mean if you're being abused that you just leave yourself under abuse. No, that's a different situation. You need to get out from under that abuse. But you also then need to, to ask the Lord to help you that you don't carry offense and unforgiveness, which hinders you. Isn't that right? See, so you don't need to stay under the abuse, but you also can't carry unforgiveness. See, they're two different things. Okay, so number one, find out what God's word says. Number two, get in a, into a position to receive. Get yourself in alignment with God, into a position to receive. Number three, you need to pray according to the word of God. Don't just pray out of your own mind. Pray according to the word. Pray according to the word. In Isaiah 43, 26, God said this. Put me in remembrance. Let us contend together. State your case that you may be acquitted. Now, this is God saying, put me in remembrance. Did I say something about this? Did I comment on this situation? Well, then come and talk to me about it. If you, if you don't feel like you're getting what you should get based on what I've said, come tell me that. God is not offended. He appreciates it. He wants you to pay attention to what he said. Put me in remembrance. Let us contend together. State your case that you may be acquitted. So it's not disrespectful to come and to tell God, God, you said. And that's not happening right now. Lord, bring to pass what you said. God's not offended at that. He appreciates. He's saying, oh, you're paying attention to what I said now. That's good. Come, state your case. How many of you remember the, the story of Hezekiah? Hezekiah was a good king. But Isaiah came to Hezekiah by the word of the Lord. And God said, you go tell Hezekiah, put your house in order because you're going to die. Do you remember the story? And Isaiah started walking out, got out to the courtyard, and Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and began to call out to the Lord and say, Lord, 
You remember, I'm, I'm trying to do good. I've tried to obey you all these years and not do evil, but do right things and such. And while he was still talking, God said to Isaiah, turn around, turn around, turn around. And go back and tell him, I'm going to give him 15 more years. What did Hezekiah do? He put God in remembrance. He said, now you said it. If we're obedient, right? I, I, I was obedient. I did, I did right things. I tried to keep my heart right before you. And God said, you know, you're right. You did. Go, go back and tell him I'll give him 15 years. Isn't that right? Did God change his mind? Just like that. I mean, Isaiah didn't even make it home. God said, turn around. Go back and tell him. Go back and tell him. See, but this is, this is the tender-hearted God that we serve. This is the tender heart of God. And in the middle of that conversation, you can also say, I know I've done wrong too, but Lord, I, I repent of that. Forgive me of that. I don't want to do that anymore. But Lord, it wasn't all wrong. I was trying to do right. Put me in remembrance. Let us contend together. State your case that you may be acquitted. That's the kind of God we serve. That's the kind of God we serve. In 1 John 5, 14 and 15, I just love these verses because they bring so much clarity and understanding in a very summarized way. Listen to these verses. John said, now this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything, listen to these words, according to his will. That if we ask anything according to his will. See, Jesus said, ask and it will be given. John, his, his disciple that he loved, is saying, according to his will. According to his will. How many of you know if somebody comes and says, Lord, I just really want to marry Lucy. I love her. I mean, we, we love each other. and You know, we finish each other's sentences and she's just exactly what I'm looking for. But the problem is you're already married, Jack. <laughs> you're married to Jane. No, you can't be asking for Lucy. That's not God's will for you to have Lucy. Amen? Amen? See, so when Jesus says, ask and it will be given, he's not saying you can just ask for anything your flesh wants out of the will of God, and God will just be your, you know, genie that comes out of a bottle and does it. No, that's not what he's saying. Jesus is talking in the context of the rest of the things that the Bible teaches. And John clarifies here, now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. We can be confident about that. If we ask according to his will, he hears us. And watch this. And verse 15, if we know that he hears us, we know that we have the petitions that we've asked of him. Can you see that? Wow. That's absolute, isn't it? I said, that's absolute, isn't it? See, but we have to ask according to his will. Well, how do you know his will? Well, that's why we started with number one. Find out what God's word says about your situation. Find out what God's word says. Find out the will of God. His will is his word. This is what he spoke to us. And it, and it will not return to us to him void. He's not a man that he should lie. Isn't that right? He's watching over it to perform it. So this is his will. This is his will for our lives. And we need to pray according to the word. You know, when I was first learning these things, oh, back about, let's see. Oh, yeah, it was about 40 years ago. When I was first learning these things, the Lord taught me in prayer to start like this. Lord, your word says... Lord, your word says, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say what his word says. Not because he forgot, but I'm bringing it to him. But I'm also helping my prayer to be aligned to that. Lord, your word says that by his stripes we are healed. So I thank you, Lord, that he, my healing is covered in what Jesus paid for. See? I thank you, so I receive this healing in Jesus' name. See, Lord, your word says, Lord, your word says. Start with, Lord, your word says, but you got to find out what the word says so you have something to say. Isn't that right? All right. I read Isaiah 55, 11, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. But let me read a little context to that. Because if you start in the eighth verse, Isaiah said this by the word of the Lord. It's, it's God speaking. Here's what God said. 
For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please and prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Now, what is God saying? God's saying, listen, my thoughts and your thoughts are not the same. Mine are much higher than yours. And my ways and your ways are not the same. My ways are much higher than yours. But I don't want to leave you there. So here's what I did. So as the rain comes down and snow from heaven and water the earth and make the earth do something it was not doing before, make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so will my word do that to you. I'm going to speak it. It's going to come into your ears and into your heart. And then what's going to grow inside are my thoughts. And what's going to come out of your life are my ways. I want to bring you up to my thoughts. I want to bring you up to my ways. But you got to get the word in. Now, this is why the devil doesn't want you to have time for the Bible. But God says, listen, if you don't have time for my word, then you can't get up to my thoughts. You can't get up to my ways. You're, you're not going to be in alignment with me. And it's going to be hard for you to receive what I'm bringing you. But if you'll stay in my word and listen to what I'm saying to you, you're, you'll begin to think like me. You'll begin to act like me. You'll begin to talk like me. And we'll be walking together, flowing together. And it'll be easy for you to receive from me. Come on. How many of you can see this? Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, if, if you haven't done it already, you know, we've got three Bible reading plans that we put out. You know, you can find it on the YouVersion uh, Bible app, the most popular Bible app in the world. You, you, if you search for Jesus Disciple, now you'll find these Bible reading plans. There's a New Testament plan, one chapter a day. There's a whole Bible, which is about three chapters a day, gets you through the whole Bible. And then there's the one I do, the one-two plan, gets you through the whole Bible once and the New Testament twice in a year. I like that. Also, did you know that on uh, my YouTube channel, the Jerry Dermon YouTube channel, every day I post a New Testament chapter and just walk people through a New Testament chapter. Every day, hundreds of people every day walk through it with me. And so if you want somebody just to read it with you, I just read through a chapter and just share some insights every single day, every single day. And so that way you're not just reading it. If you want somebody just to explain some things to you, and we'll just walk through the whole New Testament that way and just start doing it. See, and so any, anybody can get the word of God in. Anybody can do it, but we need to do it. We need to do it. Okay. So that was number three, and that was to pray according to the word. And then number four, be led by the Spirit. Be led by the Spirit. Why is that? Because every situation has unique factors. So yeah, you may be dealing with a sickness, but the cause of your sickness may be hereditary, or the cause of your sickness may be dietary, or the cause of your sickness may be demonic. We see that in the Gospels, where in certain situations when Jesus cast out a demon, the physical problem left at the same time. Is that right? Now, ultimately, they all come from sin and Satan, but some are directly attacks of the enemy, and others are hereditary or dietary or whatever. But nonetheless, every situation has its unique factors, and the Holy Spirit will lead you to know what to do. See, and that's not only physical, but it's also relational. It's also financial. The Holy Spirit always knows what to do. Romans 8, 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. So we children of God need to be led by the Holy Spirit. Jesus said in John 16, 13, However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all the truth. So yes, we need the truth of the word, but... God sent a personal guide to guide us into the word so that we're focusing on the right promises for, the, for our situation. 
and thinking about it the right way and connecting the dots that need to be connected. See, the Holy Spirit's here to help us. When he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he'll guide you into all truth. For he'll not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. So number four, be led by the Spirit. And then number five, continue to stand on God's word until breakthrough comes. Continue to stand on God's word until the breakthrough comes. How many of you have experienced that even when you do get breakthrough, it didn't always come as quickly as you wanted it? Anybody else? Right? And we live in an instant world. I mean, you could, you could order something this morning on Amazon and get it today. Not exactly sure how all that happens, but somebody's, somebody's pretty brilliant, and there are people that are hustling. But, but if Amazon can do that, how much more could God do that? And yet it doesn't always happen like that. So what do you have to do? You have to hang in there because there are many factors. Now, we read Matthew 7, verse 7, ask and it will be given. But let me read it to you from the New Living Translation. It says, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Now, that's not a mistranslation because when, when Jesus said, ask and it will be given, the word ask is in the present tense, and the Greek present tense has that continuation in it. The Greek present tense means at, keep asking. And so the NLT actually is accurate here in, what it's, in how it translated. Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open. How many of you know when something goes wrong, we can get discouraged and stop asking? Isn't that right? Some attack comes, some disappointment comes, we can get discouraged and stop. But notice Jesus said, don't stop, don't stop. Don't stop when those bad things happen. Stay with it, stay with it. You know, there's a, there's a little scripture in Proverbs that is one of the least encouraging scriptures in the Bible. And it goes like this. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Well, thanks, thanks a lot, Lord. I appreciate that. You know? And we've all done that in various situations. Isn't that right? We've all done that. Every one of us in situations. We fainted. We stopped pressing it. We stopped asking. We stopped sticking with it. In the day of adversity. Why? We're discouraged. We lost heart. But Jesus said, keep on asking. Keep on asking. And you will receive. Now listen to this. I love this little parable that Jesus gave in Luke 18. In verse 1 it says, Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. That men always ought to pray and not lose heart. How long should we pray? Always. Always ought to pray and not lose heart. And now here's the parable. Verse 2. Saying, there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now, there was a widow in that city, and she came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. See, somebody had taken advantage of her, done her wrong. And she didn't have a husband to take up for, didn't have family. She's a widow, and so she's now coming to the judge. Get justice for me from my adversary. Verse 4, and he would not for a while. But afterward, he said within himself, though I do not fear God, nor regard man. I don't care about anybody but myself. What that's saying. Verse 5. Yet, because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. So who's he thinking about? Himself. Himself. But he said, this lady, if she keeps coming, she's, gonna be a, she's gonna, going to annoy me by continually asking, so I'm going to go ahead and get justice for her. I'm going to rule in her favor, which is right. But he said, I don't really care about her. But I don't want to be annoyed, so I'm going to give it to her. But then look at this, verse 6. Then the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. See, Jesus said he's an unjust judge. And yet he gave her what she wanted. 
She, he's an unjust judge. And yet he gave her what she wanted because she persisted. Is that right? And Jesus said, hear what the unjust judge said, verse 7, and shall not God? Let me put something in parentheses here. The righteous judge, the just judge of all the universe, and shall not God avenge his own elect who cry out, notice this, day and night to him? Day and night to him? What does that mean? You're sticking with it. You're sticking with it. Who cry out day and night. Shall not God avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? In other words, though he puts up with our weaknesses, our sins, our rebellion, our disobedience. And Jesus said, even in spite of all that he puts up with you, shall not God avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him? Though he bears long with them, and notice Jesus answers his own question in verse 8. I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. I tell you, he will avenge them. I tell you, he will avenge them. Who? Those, those of his who cry out day and night to him. I tell you, he will. Now, how many of you believe that Jesus knows the Father better than we do? Isn't that right? And Jesus who knows us, is telling us, I'm telling you he will. I'm telling you he will. Don't you stop asking him. Don't you stop asking him. I'm telling you he will. Stay with it. Stay with it. Keep asking him. Keep asking him. I'm telling you he will. I know him. He will. Stay with it. Stay with it. How many of you can hear the Lord? I mean, he's ministering to us. He's encouraging us not to go by sight. But to go by faith in what he said, for we walk by faith and not by sight. I tell you, he will. I tell you, he will. I tell you, he will. He will. Yeah, but he hasn't yet, but he will. Keep, keep with it. Keep with it. Hebrews 6, 12 says, do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. It takes patience to stay with it and to keep asking God. Isn't that right? Galatians 6, 9 says, let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. If we do not lose heart. If we do not lose heart. In due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Now let me just solve something for you. Many years ago, I was teaching on prayer, and this is in the teachings that people listen to in discipleship. And I said, well, if you've already asked in faith, just to ask again and again and again turns out to be unbelief. Well, how, how does that reconcile with Jesus saying, but keep asking? And men ought to, you know, pray day and night, calling out to him. Well, here, here's what I mean. And I'm sticking to what I said, but I want to bring clarification. If you're coming to ask again, as if, well, you're not doing anything. Well, that's a prayer of unbelief. See, that means you didn't believe what you already prayed. But the Bible gives us the key here of how we can continually ask for the same thing, but stay in faith. And it's found in other places, but I love to go to Philippians 4, 6. This is where the Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, watch this, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known. You're bringing the request back to him, but you're doing it with what? Thanksgiving. Why? Because you're not saying, I don't believe you listened to me the first time. No, you don't have to deny him acknowledging the first prayer by bringing it up again, but you can do it with thanksgiving. So once you ask it and you believe you've asked in faith, then from then on, keep bringing it up until you receive it. But bring it up with thanksgiving. Lord, and I want to thank you for the breakthrough with our debt. Thank you that this debt is paid off. Oh, I thank you, Lord. You know, I brought that to you and I prayed and I'm bringing it to you again with thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, you pay this debt off. 
Thank you, Lord, you bring this relational breakthrough. Thank you, Lord, you bring this healing to my body. Thank you, Lord, you bring that child back to the Lord. Isn't that right? Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. See, you're, you're asking again, but you're doing it with thanksgiving. Amen. Can you see that? This is how you continually bring it to the Lord, but in faith. But in faith, not in unbelief, like you're not listening to me. No, but we need to stick with it. Let me just close. You know, uh, I've shared many times about how we had a, a child that, I mean, went through a rough period where it looked bad. It looked like this child was going to end up in hell and ruin their life and everything else. And Kimberly and I, when we had to pray and keep praying and stick with it and stick with it and stick with it, and oh, thank God, he turned it around. We, we couldn't do anything. That child wasn't listening to us anymore. Wouldn't listen to anything we said. I mean, demons had just gotten in and just deceived and sort of taken over the situation. But we have a promise where God says, all your children shall be taught by the Lord. And we just kept going back to the word. What does the word say? Oh, Lord, you said, you said, putting him in remembrance. And thank God he turned it around. But let me just close with this. I remember listening to a, a very well-known healing evangelist. Somebody that was back during the healing revivals of the 40s and the 50s, 1940s, 50s, 60s and such. God was doing many healings all across our land. And he was one of those uh, fairly well-known ministers. And, but he was also, I like, I like to listen to him because he was also a pastor. So he, would, he went out and evangelized and such. But then there were seasons where God would put him in a church and he would pastor. You know, it's, it's easier to come to a church and to be a guest speaker and to pray healing and say, God will heal you and lay hands. And then you leave. Well, what about the people that they didn't, they're not healed? See, pastors, we, we're here. We, we didn't, we're not going anywhere. So we get to talk about what didn't happen or didn't happen yet. Is that right? Well, th this one, God would put him in churches and he'd just stay there for years. And so now you got to deal with the ones that didn't receive at least instantly. See, and so, but I remember he was telling a story. He had pastored a certain church and then God led him to go pastor a different church. And so years later, he came back to one of the churches that he'd already pastored. And he said he and his wife were moving in. And so they just had boxes everywhere and things and heard a knock at the door. And he opened the door, and here's a lady that he recognized because he'd pastored this church before. And she said, hello. And, and she said, good to see you. We're glad you're back and such. And she said, do you remember my mother? He said, yeah, I remember your mother. She said, well, well she's, she's sick and, with cancer. And the doctors have only given her 10 days to live. And I wondered if you, you could come and pray for her. He said, yeah, I'd be happy to do that. I'd be happy to do it. Then he's, he's telling the story, and he said this. Well, I didn't go that day because, you know, we're just, we're just getting moved in. I had boxes everywhere. He said, didn't go the next day. We had so many things to do. He said, then on the third day, I said to my wife, well, I better go over and minister to her mother because the doctor only gave her 10 days, and we let three of them slip already. He said, I better get over there. So he went over there, and he, he sat there. And, of course, the lady is very weak, very frail, very thin, but she recognized him, and so they, they talked, and she said this. She said, oh, just let me go on and home and be with Jesus. She said, I've lived a long life. Just let me go on and live and be with Jesus. And, and it, this, is, this is why I, I remember this story, because he said something most people don't say. He said, no, I'm not going to do it. No, I'm not going to do it. He said, God's not going to get any glory out of you dying like this. He said, uh, let's get you healed, and then after you get healed, then you can die if you want to. <laughs> That's what he said. Well, that caught my attention. That caught my attention. And so he said, he said, well, he said, we're just getting back to this church. I don't have a lot of appointments or anything. He said, so I just started coming back about every day and just opening the scriptures with her and sh sharing what the Bible said about healing. And got to the place where it's coming out of her mouth now. And now she's speaking the word of God. In fact, I didn't tell you this, that the daughter said, uh, Pastor, I want to show you. 
and, and leaned her mother up like this. And you know how those hospital robes that you can see in the back, you know, they're open. And showed a big bluish purplish circle on her back and said, the doctor said, that's that cancer eating out toward her back. Well, I don't know how many of you, I would have said, I don't need to see that. You know, I'm, I'm trying to have faith. How many of you know, seeing something doesn't always help your faith, isn't that right? But he saw it and such. But he said, then I just kept going back about every day and just opening the word with her and sharing the word. And we believed together. We prayed together. He said, took me six months, to, but we got her completely healed. Amen. Cancer free. And she lived several more years and then died and went home without sickness. Now you can see why that story caught my attention. But here's somebody that believed in it, had studied it from the word, and is now pastoring and helping people to say, let's stay with the word. Let's keep asking. Let's keep speaking the word. Come on, stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. Right? And so he was able to get her completely healed. Well, praise God. How many of you know... We, we've all lost battles. I have. And you have too. But the Lord's encouraging us saying, come on. Come back on the word. Let, let's, let's, win, let's win battles. Let's win battles and give Jesus glory. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Let's win battles and give Jesus glory. How many believe the Lord's speaking to you today? Oh, you may not be in a battle right now, but you will be. You can't live in this life and not be in battles. Isn't that right? You're going to face battles. Let's stand together. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Praise God. Before we leave, let's tell the Lord we receive. Say, Lord, I receive what you're saying to me today. I receive what you're saying to me today. Thank God. Thank God. Tell the Lord, Lord, help me to find the scriptures. Help me to write them down or copy and paste them. And get him in front of me so that I can begin to pray that way. Let's say to the Lord, Lord, anything that's out of alignment in my life, Lord, I choose to bring it back into alignment. Holy Spirit, lead me, lead me to be in a position to receive. Lead me to be in a position to receive. Lead me, Lord. You know, it takes humility to admit that you're out of alignment. But the Holy Spirit will show you where you're out of alignment and then you humbly repent and come back into alignment i've had to do it many times thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus praise god tell the lord i believe you lord i trust you lord i trust you lord you know i i, I encourage you and this is probably more important for some of you than others, uh, to go back and listen to this message. It'll be posted later on today, this afternoon. Go back and listen to it again. Sometimes just going back over. If the Lord's speaking something to you, just hearing it doesn't do anything. We need to hear and we need to put into practice what the Lord is saying. We need to walk this out. Isn't that right? Follow, follow through with these things the Bible teaches us. And then we'll see victory. I believe we're going to see some victories over some tough battles out of this message in this service today. Amen. Amen. And that includes people watching online. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So in Jesus' name, Lord, I pray that you lead each person to take the time and to walk through these things so they can receive and give Jesus glory and share with others the goodness and faithfulness of our God in Jesus' name. And if you agree with that, would you say amen? Can we clap in agreement today? Amen.